So we have now successfully completed the post detail view. Um, of course, there's things that you could add to it to make it a little bit more dynamic, but for the most part, it works really well, especially the linking part. That's like really important. If that fully didn't, if it didn't really sink in for you, um, definitely go back and try it and break it and try it again and then rewatch. And the nice thing is all of this code is gonna be on GitHub. So you can check that out there whenever you need to. So in this one, what we're gonna do is actually jump into something a little bit easier and that is using forms. And more specifically, we're gonna be doing model forms to start. Model forms are basically a form, you know, like you fill out a form on a web page and it's going to save that data into the database for us. So inside of posts, we're going to make a new file inside of the post apps. It's going to be forms.py and that's from Django import forms. And then we'll do from dot models import post. And we're just going to make a new class called post form and it's going to be forms.model form. And it's going to be, we're going to say class meta model equals to post. And then we want the fields that we're going to include here. So it's just going to be a list of fields that we want to include um, inside of the post itself. So if we look at our model, it's what fields we want here. So title and content is really all we want. So title and content. Cool. So now that we've got this post form, let's go ahead and copy this. So we're going to import this into our post create view. So Let's go ahead and do this import from dot forms, import post form. And now in our post create, we are gonna do the form equals to post form. And we'll just in, uh, instantiate it or initialize it with the parentheses. And then we'll add some context. And we're gonna say form, context variable of form is equal to the view variable of form. And then finally, we're gonna return some sort of render here. Let me copy this and paste it in here. And again, I'm gonna make a new HTML and call this post underscore form.html. And in our templates, we're gonna make a new file and we'll call it post underscore form.html. And I'm just gonna copy the index stuff, paste it into our post form and just get rid of everything out. And I'll just say form. And in here, we're gonna use our form variable, do form as P. So as paragraph, and we'll take a look at what this does in just a second. Let's just check a few things. First of all, we have a our post model form um, in here imported. We set it equal to the variable form, and then we set that context into our post form HTML. Inside of our post form HTML, we render the form with form.asp, and we already have the URL set up for the create. So let's actually take a look at create. So I'm gonna come in here, post slash create, and now I've got this form, right? Very, very simple. Of course, I don't have a few things to it yet. Like I don't have an input button. So let's go ahead and add one. And I'm just gonna put it underneath here and we'll say input type equals to submit and value equals to um, create post. All right, so we've got now a submit button. If I submit, it doesn't seem to do anything. I go to title and say hello and content and I hit create post nothing happens. Well, that should make sense because in our HTML, we actually haven't wrapped in a form itself. So we'll do form and we will now close this off. So now this is now treated as an HTML form. So we'll refresh in here and we'll try that again. We'll say hello content and create post. Notice it puts the title and content up into the URL bar. That's because the default method for a form is git. So if I said method equals to git, it wouldn't be any different than what it already is, right? And that's actually not what we want. What we want is post. Because if you remember back to CRUD, we talked about CRUD a little bit, we had these different methods, right? And the create method, post is what we're gonna be using. So we wanna use post, the post method in our form. Right, so that's the method that we actually want to do. And there's another thing called action, and I'm gonna leave that empty, but action is basically saying which URL to send it to, right? And don't worry about this right now if you don't understand it, but basically, um, if I had this form on just posts itself, if I had that create form and I wanted to be send to create, I would just have it go to posts slash create. So leaving it empty here, is gonna send it to post.create. 
which we'll understand sending data and, and accepting that data in just a moment. All right, so now that we've got this action, I'll just say hello again and content. We'll hit create post. And now it's saying CSRF verif verification failed. Um, so CSRF stands for cross-site request forgery. Basically what this is saying is um, it needs security. So a, another website can't just send post data to your website. Your website needs to validate that data and make sure that it's good data and it's data that we want. Um, so in here, Django provides the security um, by default. So we'll do CSRF token, just render it itself using that exactly. Of course, if you wanna know more about CSRF, um, you can look up on the Django documentation and read more about it. it might be something you're worth doing. Anyway, so let's go back in here and refresh. I can just confirm the form submission again, uh, and it's not coming through because we actually need to change the page. So I'm gonna go ahead and create post, and this time the data goes away. Um, and then also right here, we don't see that data or anything anymore in the URL. So where'd the data go? Well, it actually just went off into nowhere because the data itself is not being captured. So there's a few ways on how we can actually capture this data. And what I'm gonna do here is say, if request.method equals to post, then we're gonna print out request.post. All right, so if this request that's coming through here, if the method method's equal to post, we're gonna print out what request.post is. So again, refresh one more time. Now we can actually just submit it one more time. And if we go into the terminal, what we see here is a query dictionary saying content, an empty content, and then also um, hello or it, it actually doesn't have empty content. Content actually is something in there. And then our title being hello, and that CSRF token, um, middleware token. So that's validating that it can actually be sent. So this is the data itself. So let's be a little bit more uh, robust with this data and say get content, and then we'll also get the title. So those two things that we're actually submitting. Refresh in here, continue. And now it says content and hello. Right, so it's actually getting that data for us. Now one could think like, oh, well, maybe like what we were doing with the query set stuff, I could just do post.objects.create title equals to title. You could go through and do something like that, but that is not suggested at all. The only reason I'm telling you about it is because it does exist. This is actually how it works. And there's a reason for Django forms and how they work. So to show you that you can still get the data outside of the context of the Django form, that's what this is all about. But since we have the ability to validate this data and make sure it's good data, um, that is what Django forms are all about. So there's a lot of ways on how to do validation, um, but by default, the model form has validation in of itself. So one of those things that, that's doing validation, if we went this direction, I'm gonna get rid of this create call here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and bring back the print title stuff. I'm gonna refresh in here, and I'm gonna hit continue. And what I see is it's still, it's empty, right? It's showing empty values. Um, so if I just said title is, or title plus that, and refreshed in here with empty content, it's actually coming through still. We don't want that to happen. We want it to be based off of the model, which these two things are required fields, right? So to make that happen, we used the Django form instead of just this request method stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all that, or actually I'll comment it out so you guys can still see it. Um, but what we wanna do is take the request inside of here. So I'll just say request.post. So I save that, come back in here and refresh. And now it says this field is required. So now it's showing these validation errors. These are built-in validation errors. Um, but we don't want to see these validation errors every time we load it, right? We would rather, we would say request post or none. So it's either going to grab that post data or it's not going to get anything. And now what we can do is add a new new title in here. So I'll say new content and content here and hit create post. Doesn't seem like anything happened. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that and just look at the list of posts. And at the very bottom, we still, we're still not seeing anything as far as the content is concerned. But the content actually did come through. So what we need to do now is we'll have to say if form.is valid um, instance equals to form.save commit equals to false. 
and then instance.save. Okay, let's try this again, refresh it, and we will come back into posts. And at the very bottom, we should see a new one, and we do, 14. We try that a few more times just to prove that it works. And we'll go back into posts. And we go down to the very bottom and we have 22 now instead of 14. Um, so our create method is actually working. But again, if I get rid of something here and hit create post, it's gonna say this field is required. It's referring to the content field itself here. Um, and if I get rid of any of these, again, it does the exact same thing. So that's form validation. And when we say if form is valid, so that means that all the fields are valid, everything's filled out the way it should be, um, and all the validation stuff actually exists and works, then it's gonna go through this as valid and then actually save it into the database. The other nice thing here is we can actually print out the form data. So we can do form.cleaneddata.get, and I'll just say title. Um, so that's how you get, so form.cleaneddata.get, and then the field name, that's actually how you would do it. And we come back in here, Let's try that again, title two and ABC, create post, and we'll see that title two is printed out. Um, so this is saying, hey, this is good data. Um, we can print out that data, and then we can also save that data into our database. So that is our create form. There's a lot more stuff to forms than that we've covered here. Um, definitely a lot more stuff that you can do and doing custom validations and stuff like that. If you wanna know more about custom validations, definitely check out TryJango 1.8. We talk about more custom validations in there using something not called model form, but instead using just standard built-in Django forms. We also use that on a lot of our other projects too, if you wanna learn more about forms specifically. Um, but the model form itself uses validations that are based off of the model as we've already seen. Um, so if you also did something that was too long for the title, we could see that. I'm just gonna copy and paste this and it might not even let me go far enough to make it too long. No, it won't even let me, it won't even let me paste enough characters to make it go too long. It will stop at 120, which is also a really cool thing. Um, but that's really simple, right? So all you did here was we created our model and then we added that model to a model form and then we put it into an HTML document. And then finally in our view, we just handled how that view worked and handled everything else. So if you have any questions on this, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.